Eh, guess it's time to make another shitty video to get 10 views, huh? <laughs> Kyle Ken Kanye West here. I just squirted. I was trying to think. Which Goku has the most drip? Is it Turner Power Goku? Yeah. You got a little bit of drip. But what's the number one drip filled Goku? Fucking Xeno Goku. Come on. Like, look at this shit. It's basically wearing a fucking bape jacket like this is crispy so I'm gonna show you a deck list with this but it's gonna be a little different this time not with my uh, throwing cards all over my mat putting it up to the camera I'm going lazy style <laughs> gotta mention that big announcement that's in the video title is actually gonna be at the end after the deck list uh, quick little teaser it involves some uh, DBS youtubers uh, some other people, and it's really big news, a lot bigger than my channel, and I hope you guys will enjoy it. So, boom. Here we go, we're on Shenron's lair. Ah. The real reason we're on here is just because these bad boys still haven't fucking come in. It's been three weeks. These, and there's one more card in the deck. Two more of these, because I only pulled one out of the anniversary box, so... Didn't want to be short-handed. So with that all out of the way, let's get into this drip. <laughs> Starting off with the leader here, uh, auto burst three when this card attacks, add one card from my life to my hand, and then I draw one card. Let's add up to one life, you don't need to, but it's a self awakening, so you don't need to worry about getting stalled out uh, from your awaken. And when you have four or less life, you may draw one Stop fucking stuttering. card and switch one energy act mode, flip this card over. So, pretty decent. You can always get your uh, free overrealms with that. There's a Trunks I'm showing later in this video that combos well with that. On his backside. Now this... Picture alone gives him a drip. But being a permanent double strike... Like, come on. Like, they finally made a leader that's permanently double strike. That's good. Let's... Like, come on. Uh, so, during your turn... The... This card gets 5k power for every 8 black battle cards in your warp. Sounds weird, but uh, you'll usually have at least 8 in your warp anyway. So he's usually 20k double. And then I place up to 4 black battle cards from my warp into my drop area. Then I draw 1 card. And that's his activate main once per turn. So you still get that draw even though you don't draw off the attack. But come on. A 20 double strike hitting your face with a leader attack. A lot of stuff, like, sure, they can negate whatever, but say they Nimbus for the turn, I can still swing with my leader and my unisons. Unisons of this deck. I only got one, and it's a 5k, so it's not a huge swing, but still, better than nothing. So, unison for the deck, SS4 Vegeta Supreme Saiyan Power. So if my leader card's black, when your opponent plays a battle card using a non-keyword skill, they choose one card in their hand, discard it. Your ears might be ringing a little bit. You're like, that auto sounds familiar. Very similar to the Dark Power Black Mass Sands auto. Uh, which, if you don't know what this card is, this is basically the fucking Lisa Ann of black cards. Spin around forever and still a hit. If you know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> when, uh, when your opponent plays a battle card with 15 power or less uh, using a non-keyword skill your opponent chooses two cards in their hand place in the drop area so they both have their uses here the unison anything doesn't matter what the power is if it's a non-keyword skill and it's getting played it is making your opponent ditch one card but it's once per turn this boy does it as many times per turn but he is restricted to 15k power or less any deck that free plays anything will uh, usually get hit by this in the early game, but not so much late game if they're free playing bigger cost cards or say like an act like an activate main on a, a lot of the secret rares that are coming out for set 12 have activate mains where they get played. So he won't hit those, but this boy will. 
Yeah, so his plus two, when I activate Overwhelm skill, uh, add up to one card from my life to my hand, and I get to add two markers to him, keep him safe. Uh, so usually the turn one play with him, if I'm going second, best case scenario, I'll have one of this in hand, and I will have one of these trunks time regulator. So these can be played for free. Uh, they're Overwhelm three. Uh, if I have at least three cards in my drop area, I just send them to the warp, which this leader, he bursts three. Okay, well, uh, my mic stopped working, so I guess my computer knew that this was going to be the cringiest card video of all time. So, let's get back to it. Where were we? Right here with the Overwhelm. So turn one, ideal turn one. If you're going second, you play the unison, and then you swing with your leader. You get your burst three, you can draw a life, draw a card from your deck. If the attack goes through, whatever, you're going to overwhelm this card. The auto when he's played using overwhelm, I draw two cards. Uh, and then send one card from my hand to the warp. And I get two markers on this unison. And I can take a life if I want to just go crazy aggro. I usually don't. Unless it's against a really slow deck and I know the deck. But generally, you're probably not going to take two life right off the bat. Like once from the leader and once from the unison. But you got a 15k on board. You've just drawn two cards and plus your unison by two. It is on a very efficient turn one. Some more of the extra cards here. Uh, up with one cost. Just I don't know what order Shenron's layer is doing it in. But personally, this isn't the order I would use. Yeah, it looks like it's going all by cost order but has extra cards I don't know I like using my battle cards first then extra cards but I'll go battle cards first so I don't know how to fucking say that are you kidding me Koitsukai something mechanical courage uh, so if you run any black deck you've probably heard about this card that's why the market on this card keeps going up uh, I don't even know what it is at this time, but uh, remove this card from your drop area from the game for one energy, then choose two cards in your hand, place them in the bottom of your deck in any order, draw cards equal to the number of cards you place in the bottom of your deck with skill. That part already is like, good, I can replace my hand, uh, two cards in my hand, get some better stuff, but that's not the big ticket while you're playing this card. The big ticket is for the second ability, uh... For the duration of that turn, if your opponent plays a battle card 20 pow uh, 20k power or less, they choose two cards from their hand and send them to their warp. Okay, 20k or less. What's the cost of every free counterplay, like unison counterplay, in the game currently? They're all under 20k. As well as Topo is under 20k as well too. And almost every negate like on play battle card negate someone's gonna play it's gonna be less than 20k so they're gonna be chucking those cards right out of their hand for you so if you got the extra energy and you're trying to end that turn this is the perfect tech card for you so first of the many negates in this deck uh the first one's a battle card so it's son goku making an entrance you play black you know this you negate the attack play the card so one cost it can evolve into the other gokus we have in this deck and the best part about this card is the one drop black card. So it can be pulled back with power burst. So right here you only see eight cards. That's actually 12 negates. So boom. Money. So you can buy some more supreme clothes. You know what I mean? Drip. We already went over the dark power black mass saying. Vegeta time regulator. So it was one of the cards that weren't in yet. This card when Toa first came out was ridiculously overpriced like everyone was using this card it's not so popular now but i still think it's really good in this deck just because this deck's a little more mid-range very very hand control and uh you want to keep your hand full so when you play a battle card using overrealm choose two black battle cards with the energy cost of seven or less in your warp place them at the bottom of your deck in any order if you place the battle card at the bottom of your deck draw one card simple you have this guy and this guy out, play an overwhelm card, especially if it's the trunks here. You're drawing two cards for the trunks, you're drawing one for the Vegeta, and you're adding two markers. 
It's just all about making a resource factory here so I can keep my cards in my hand while I'm stopping free plays or punishing them for free playing and dropping cards out of their hand. That's basically the whole tech to this deck. And obviously, so you can have this sick-ass leader. Like, come on. I'm uh, running four of the SS Sun Goku Time Patrol Elite Super Combos. It's just a generic four or less super combo. Uh, if your life's at four or less, draw a card. And uh, the reason why I'm picking this one is I can get myself to four life really easily, but I can't always guarantee having five in my drop. Because if, say, I overwhelm something big that turn, I can only send four back with my leader on his awakened side. So I'd have to force combo something in the drop area just to get his sparking five if it was, say, the Trunks super combo. But the reason why I'm using this one also is because it is a Saiyan for a card that I have coming right up. So this Black Mass Saiyan, uh, time, uh, the time devastated, what the hell am I saying? Black Mass Saiyan the Devastator. During your turn, if your card is black and there's a total of 15 or more Saiyan cards, Saiyan. All, a lot of these cards are either Saiyan or Fu, basically. <laughs> ah, there's some Demigras and a Boo. Now, I'm lying. But uh, if you have 15 or more Saiyan cards in you and your opponent's drop, so it adds both together, uh, when this card attack fails or is negated, they over combo it, like anything like that, I still choose one card in my opponent's life, send it to their warp. So unless his skill is getting negated by something like um, Petrification where it negates the skills of a card, I'm guaranteed to do one damage, either crit or it's going to be a warped life, which is even worse. So this is usually what I try to save for the end. And I just realized I was so caught up in the drift that I didn't even explain the minus 5 on the Vegeta because I hardly ever use it and it's not what I'm using this unison for, I'm using it to control the board. But there is once, one singular time I've actually won using that activate main and it's tap, uh, it's tap 4 black and it's minus 5 for the unison cost. Send one card from your opponent's life to their warp. They kind of have a similar thing going on between the both of them, but this I don't need to attack. It's a guaranteed one life to their warp as long as I got five markers. Very situational because having four energy open, unless they were at one life from the turn before, it's really dangerous. And uh, here, one of my favorite uh, black cards that aren't an overwhelm card is Shenron Figure of Majesty. I'm running three in this deck because my turn four is almost always playing this card. So, if you don't know what this is, it's an old uh, set 5 starter deck card. Um, so, this card can attack, just like most Shenron cards. Uh, he uh, has a sparking 5 effect, activate made once per turn. I draw one card, then I choose an effect. The most important one here is probably choosing two of your energy, switching them to active mode. That's the one 95% of the time I'm using. The only time I'm not using that one would probably be giving my leader card so you can choose a leader card or one of your battle cards it gets 5k and critical for the duration of the turn so those are the two biggest effects there the third uh, the other effect is eh, situational uh, you choose one battle card with an energy cost of two or less from your drop area and play it the only thing I can really think is if you really needed the time regulator out or the dark black mass saiyan out just uh, to uh, trap them from uh, playing cards or having a time regulator so I can start drawing cards. That's like, eh, you'd probably rather just stand two and hope you have one in your hand, or you can always play a super combo as well because they are two cost. But I'm mostly untapping two with this card. And if you have multiple of them on the field, it's perfect, because this deck runs a lot of negates, so I want energy open on my opponent's turn. Another defensive card here, you could use it offensively as well too, but uh, SS3 Tag Team Sun Gohan, you probably know what this does. I can only have one in my battle at a time. 
And then when a black battle card is moved from my battle layer by skill, I play this card from my hand. What's a skill? Overwhelms a skill. Leaves dude overwhelm. Boom. Play it down right there. Or at least because my I'm facing Dark Broly, they KO my card. Boom. Put him right there. And he's a blocker 15k. What can go wrong? Right? Trunks power over scene time. So he's overwhelmed 4 tap 2. So you're like, ooh, it's a little pricier. He's double strike, 20k. So that's already a good bonus. But he also grabs one battle card uh, from my warp. Add it to my hand. Anything. So a lot of stuff in this deck is restricted to only putting 7 costs or less back in my deck. But this guy can actually get my boss monsters back as well. Uh, Majibu Witness, uh, Wickedness Incarnate. So activate main. Uh, you've probably seen this card in Veku. Ah, uh, Veku. Oh god. <laughs> Vegex. Um, or however the hell you pronounce it. But he is... If all your energy is black and you send this card from the drop area to the warp... Your, I can't activate skills on copies of this card for the turn. That's why I'm only running two of them. I didn't go into the whole logistics of everything I'm running. You can see the numbers right there, but... You're but like, why Why you have threes and twos everything in this deck? It's a black deck. I'm bursting three every turn. I'm going to see these cards. And especially with cycling them with the time regulators and stuff. I'm going to see all these cards... And a lot of them, like the Boo, I don't even want in my hand. I want him to go burst directly into the drop because that's the only use I have for him. Very seldomly will I have four energy open and the opponent have one life left, no cards in their hand. Sure, I'll play him. But, like, that's happened once. <laughs> now, here's the big bad from Draftbox 6. The Demon God Demigra. Uh, true Power Unleashed. You've seen this card. It's nuts. Why has it got Overrealm and Dark Overrealm? I don't know. They just wanted it to be played in every single hand control deck. Because when he's played, you draw a card and then you choose an opponent's battle card, send it to the warp. Already. For an Overrealm play, that's great. But when he attacks, I also get to choose one card in your hand, send it to the warp. And if I Dark Overrealm this guy for two, which. I am going to, why not? I, all my cards are black anyway. I get to keep ditching cards every time, ditching my opponent's hand every time I attack. Just boom, one card, boom, one card the next turn. Like, it's just, why, why wouldn't you play that besides it being ridiculously overpriced? But it's a good card. What do you want? You got the supreme clothing on. You, got, you can afford this shit. Come on. So... Sun Goku Saiyan Transcendence. Probably my one of my favorite arts to any card ever is this card here. Ah, uh, you've seen him. He's old. Uh, he evolves on the one drop Goku. It's, he evolves on any Xeno Goku 3 or less. He's double strike, and I can filter four cards back from my uh, drop, uh, from my warp to my drop area. And I can't play this card if I'm using non-black battle cards in any areas other than my deck, hand, or life. So, that's why... That's why I'm rolling all black. I wish I could throw in a Chomper or something, but... A little too risky because this is one of my main cards in the deck. To filter stuff back so I can keep having Overrealm fodder for the bigger stuff I'm about to show. SS4 Conqueror of Evil, so this is a set 11 card. Double Strike Xeno Vol 5 on a Sun Goku Xeno, so it can go either on the 1 drop or the 5 drop I just showed. And he is double strike when this card evolves. I choose one of my opponent's battle cards, ignoring barriers, send it to the warp, and it gains triple attack for the turn. So double strike, triple attack when he's played, 30k. Game over usually. And he does also have a protection effect just because, like I said, this is a very controly deck. Um, when your opponent attacks, negate the attack, and then negate this skill for the turn. I have to choose one card from my hand. Whatever. If I got a unison in my hand. I can pitch it, and there we go, free negate. So, Scientist Fu, another ancient old card. Not really seen too much in the meta now, but in this deck, draw two cards, and it's double strike for one. Just one energy, seven cards in my drop. It's a black deck that's really easy to accomplish, and... I get, it's another target where I can draw two with this. So a lot of the overwhelm cards in this deck are one, 
or two is try to be more low cost just so if I need to uh, boost this unison up, I can. Just so that I have protection on it. Secret on the deck, running Beyond Darkness Demigra. It's Triple Strike, Dark Over Realm 7, tap 5 energy. So ideally, obviously you want to play this turn 5. Uh, when this card attacks, your opponent reveals their hand. Choose 4 battle cards from them and combo with them in your combo area. So even if this card's attack gets negated, you're still ripping those 4 cards out of your opponent's hand. And that's literally why this card is in this deck. Is just uh, more torture on your opponent's hand. And it's, you see it almost every game. If you do end up milling it, you can always grab it back with that Trunks Power over Seeing Time. And the final battle card here, Fu Shroud and Mystery. Any deck that's running more than turn 3, turn 4, if you're not an aggro deck, throw Fu Shroud and Mystery in your deck, please. It's overall 10, so in some decks that might be a little harder, but you can always force it. Yeah, uh, it's Double Strike. And when you play this card using Overrun, your opponent can activate skills on cards other than their leader cards until the beginning of your next turn. This card was made, I think, set 3? Yeah, set 3. And the way the text is worded, it covers unison cards. So, I know they weren't thinking ahead, because... God, some of the other cards they put in this game, you know they haven't thought ahead. But, boom, say someone's got... Red loves playing their Jirens, giving them double strike. Well, they can't. Because they can't negate, they can't do anything for your turn that you play the Fu, as well as the turn after. So their next turn is basically, if they don't have a board, they're doing nothing. They're doing absolutely nothing, because they can't activate any skills. So that is your finisher, as well as the Demigra, if you aren't aggroing them to death with Scientist Fu or the Goku Conqueror of Evil. I usually, these are the the two win cons for uh, for this deck. I'm going to go with the extra cards now. Max Power Kamehameha. You get the attack. Yeah, if you have four, uh, you can send four cards when you drop it to the warp. If you do return this card to your hand and I can't use copies of it for the turn. Eh. Depends the deck you're playing. I usually don't use it for the negate because I only have two of them. I usually use it for the second effect, the activate your main. So I choose one of my opponent's battle cards with an energy cost greater than their current energy, send it to their warp. If they don't got barrier on, uh, I'm trying to think, like most of the Red Broly stuff, it doesn't have any barrier on them. Like, uh, except for the Secret Rare, obviously. But bounce anything back on decks. Dark Broly as well, too. They don't... They're playing six-cost cards on turn one. Like, Vamanos, you know? Petrification. Best negate in the deck. So if your leader is black, negate the attack. And then I choose one card from my hand, place in the drop area. And if I place the card from my hand to the drop area, I choose one of my opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier. Can attack. Be placed in my opponent's combo area. Or... Activate skills until the end of my next turn. So guess what that means? I can negate the attack on any card. Say they're swinging at me with their leader. And they have... Let's say it's a mirror match. And they got a Demigra. Waiting to swing on me next. I can Petrification the leader attack. And use it... Second effect on the Demigra to completely paralyze the card. And... I think that's worth the one energy and one card from my hand. Completely shuts down an attack and a card. So, two attacks, potentially more if they have dual attack, triple attack, anything like that. Uh, and then power burst, you know what it does. Sparking five, uh, I can pull a life, use the negate from there. Otherwise, I just negate the attack if my leader is black and I choose one card from my drop area or warp that's black and it has an energy cost of one has to be a battle card rebellion hammer so this card this is usually like i said how i turn four i play shenron i'll untap two energy 
so I can have this Rebellion Hammer open as well. So if my leader is black and I send three black battle cards from my drop area to my warp, if the battle card being played is four or less, is placed in the owner's drop area instead of being played. I know, black doesn't have a lot of great counter plays. I wish they had better counter plays, but it's fine. Because if you have 12 or more bat uh, black cards in your warp, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one. So it is really easy to be playing this card for one, which makes it a lot better. Yeah, and that was all the cards in this uh, drip-filled deck. Now that we're done with this deck list, I got that big announcement to talk about. You know what? Instead of me giving this announcement, I'm going to pass the torch off to one of the creators of this, Nick Menard. Take it away. Hey, Nick Menard with Dragon Ball Super League, the DBSL. Jodat and myself started all this up because we essentially wanted to be able to crown our own Canadian champion. Uh, we feel that there's you know, a lot of spotlight in other countries or continents and Canada doesn't really seem to be one of those and we'd love to be able to add to the mix to that. Uh, we have some absolutely awesome players out here and we'd really like to be able to showcase everyone's skills. Now, we felt the best way to be able to make this happen is essentially have low barrier to entry and also, you know, you want there to be a larger pool of players additionally. Uh, and then from there, you want to be able to have something to chase for, so i.e. the crowdfunding. Uh, that's what we felt was kind of the best mix to make all this happen. Uh, to be able to have as positive experience for everyone to make this as legit as possible for everyone too, we've been able to secure two very experienced, especially with webcam as well, level two judges, so that's Yomi and Ryan. Uh, and then we did add a third judge whose name is Robin, uh, who's actually from my own locals excellent judge as well and to make all this you know its own package to make it all worthwhile for any stores that want to you know help out with the crowdfunding i.e sponsoring parts or all the event uh that aspect comes in through the actual streaming of the event so we we made sure that we wanted again this event to be as canadian as possible so we went out and found two amazing streamers and then lucky beyond that they're both actually canadian so we got aspira and we have eggman surprise surprise Advanced Canadian. Uh, thank you both of you for being able to join in. Uh, from here, the, the crowdfunding aspect of it is essentially to make all this work, we really need support from our Canadian stores. Uh, we already had one generous uh, sponsorship that's from the upper hand, so hence uh, they've taken the Platinum package, which is essentially naming the event after them. Uh, so again, this is a DBSLE organized event, uh, so that would be myself and Jordan. And yeah, we've already got a bigger sponsor and we're more than 50% way to get in there and make this be able to happen for everyone. So I uh, really wanted to kind of break down essentially what the event is and uh, how the sponsoring of the event works to make it all happen. And if anyone ever has any questions, just feel free to reach out for us. And we're really looking forward to the event kicking off at the end of the month and being able to uh, bring in our, our our own champion so have a great day as well the dbsl is going to be much more than just this tournament there's much more stuff planned for the future as well there's just a way to kick start it off uh the fundraiser is it will be in the description below if you can support it please do so we can have as many participants as possible so you can crown the winner up here in uh, canada even for you guys outside of canada as well too Eggman and Aspire will be streaming for everyone. If you have any questions on anything, there's the link in the description below. Leave a comment, we'll answer it as soon as possible. Just so we can get this thing right off the ground and get everyone playing. So I'm not going into crazy detail about everything, just once the fundraising's done, more things will be finalized as well. Eggman and Aspire are both making videos on this as well, and I don't feel like taking the wind out of their sails. So now that we've reached the end of the video, I don't want to say drip ever again in my life, but if you like the deck list, you like the announcement, please leave a like, subscribe, helps the channel a lot. Till next time.